Okay, here we go again, ranting on the internet while I stare at my beautifully chiseled face in the camera. God damn, my wife's a luck. Nah, man, be serious. She married you for the money. Okay, so we're talking about comprehensible input, but let's define our terms before we engage in active battle. So comprehensible input is simply when you read a language or you watch a video in your target language, which is at a slightly higher level than you are currently capable of understanding, and therefore you learn words and phrases in context. We've defined our terms. If you don't agree with me, I don't care. I'll fight you out back behind the tree. I don't have a beef with comprehensible input per se. I have a beef with the over-reliance on it as an active tool of study. See, what I see is, and this is very common among language learners, including myself, is we really want to procrastinate the language learning process because, well, it's hard. And I don't want to do hard stuff, but I also want to be respected and loved for the fact that I speak random languages. Okay, I get it. So a lot of the language learners out there, they look for that magical solution and they hear about the fact that they can just watch TV in their time target language and after some magical amount of hours they will speak the language. Now is that true? Well yeah it is true you can do that but how many magical hours is the question here and I don't want to spend the amount of magical hours that I know it would require for me to reach a very high level of Chinese fluency. I've actually tested uh, comprehensible input. I've tested with Tokipona and I learnt Tokipona insanely fast with it but Tokipona is a tiny language with a very small subset of words so it makes total sense that I could learn the entire language via comprehensible comprehensible input in a record fast time but realistically I did take at least two weeks to do that and I know other people who have memorized the entire vocab of Tokipona in a day so that's not a very good like measurement when you think about it in fact you could probably extrapolate that to other languages and you can see the factor of time you would have to spend more on one method via another now I've also tried it for Chinese I actually did 300 hours and I've got a spreadsheet that I kept in my Google Drive because I wanted to see if this magical method would actually work and after 300 hours, I came to the conclusion that my listening ability had improved a tiny bit, but only for the words I already knew. Now, I had picked up already a bunch of words before I started this method, so I improved my understanding of those words and hearing those words, but I only picked up a few more individual other words, and I basically picked up no grammar. And that was after 300 hours. And after that 300 hour test, I came to the conclusion that I would probably need to spend 10 plus years just to get to like a level that was probably good enough to have like daily conversations about things that actually interest me such as gaming and and um, programming and stuff like that. I don't want to spend that insane amount of time. But here's what I see. I see so many people promoting it as the main tool for learning a language and even people saying that it's the only method for learning a language when I know that is complete and utter bullcrap because I learned Esperanto exactly through grinding, okay? And I'm doing quite well in Chinese now through pure grinding. I keep seeing these salesmen saying, oh, you just got to use comprehensible input. And you know, the great thing is I have all these video courses, but you got to pay for them if you want to see them, you know. The best way to learn a language though. Hmm, that's rather suspicious, isn't it? And then they'll add like, you know, that little thing. Oh, but you, of course you could just watch videos online. You don't need to use my video course, but it is the best video course out there and you're going to want it. You're going to be fluent. Don't worry. It's only going to take you like 2000 hours or something. 2000 hours? I know if I did 2,000 hours of active Chinese study because I've done like three months at two hours a day. Let me just calculate that. Okay, because well, my math is pretty crap. I'm just going to go 90 times like two. And that's 180 hours I've spent. And my Chinese has already gone up, I think, one and a half grades within a H HSK ladder. And I'm not even following the HSK system. I'm just learning random words from gaming videos and vlogs and stuff like that. So I know that if I spent 2,000 hours rather than just watching random videos and actively studied, I would most definitely be at a very high level. I in fact believe I'll probably be at a very good level in Chinese by the end of next year. If you've got the time and you want to blow it and you've got no goal in mind, well then great, go ahead, watch as many videos as you want, you'll eventually get there. Hell, I still watch comprehensible input videos when I'm just bored sitting on the toilet and I can't find anything else to watch. But I don't consider it active study. If I learn something from it, all the better. But it's it's just a pastime. It's almost like a passive study for me. And that's another issue of comprehensible input. I'm just going to quickly chuck this one right here and at the end is that what happens is you will watch a few, let's say one hour. And for the first hour, you can be quite focused, but no matter how good you are, you will quickly become unfocused and you'll be in a haze where you're watching things moving around. You'll hear the words and stuff, but you're actually not paying attention anymore. I found this when I pushed it to the limit and I went to five hours of comprehensible input every day for 
for I think like three weeks. Yeah, I know, I was pretty insane. But I found after the first hour, even if I gave myself regular breaks, I would be sitting there and I'd go for like five or six YouTube videos and then I'd realize I didn't actually pay attention to any of them and my brain had wandered off and I was watching the content, but I was in some type of weird ass zone where I wasn't paying attention. Now, theoretically, I'm probably learning during that, but am I? And finally, the last thing is, you can't really measure your progress beyond hours spent. I guess you could compare videos you watch now to like a year ago and maybe you'd be like, oh yeah, that video I watched a year ago is really easy now. But uh, I think that's probably a terrible way of tracking your progress and it's probably also a terrible way of giving yourself inspiration. I found the best way for me when I was doing comprehensible input was to keep a spreadsheet of hours I'd actually done so I felt like I was actually making progress because I felt like I wasn't making progress in the language itself when I went and tried to use it with people. And that's it. That's the end of my video I've come to the conclusion that you guys are gonna stick around so for those who don't stick around I will find you in the middle of the night while you're asleep and I whisper something into your ear about the fact that we're about to grind